How's it going everyone? This is Medcat here, and today we're going to talk about one of the most common types of polyprotic acid titrations, specifically that of phosphoric acid that I've shown here in the bottom left. In this titration, we start at a very low or acidic pH, because remember pH is the negative log of the concentration of hydrogen or hydronium ions that we have in solution. So low pH is acidic. At this very low pH, we have the predominant form being phosphoric acid, where all of these alcohol groups attached to this phosphorus are protonated. Okay. So that's the predominant form. Now, as we start to increase the amount of sodium hydroxide, the base that we're using on this x-axis here, we start to get a little bit more of a new species called monosodium phosphate, where we deprotonated one of these H's to make O minus. And the way that we've done that is actually quite simple. So if we draw out our phosphoric acid up here, it's going to be a basic Bronsted-Lowry acid base reaction, where we take this sodium hydroxide, which is very basic, of course, and we abstract that H, and then we put a negative charge on the O. And we end up with that monosodium phosphate and water. So really nothing to it. And that's going to be the case for creating disodium phosphate and trisodium phosphate just with the different hydrogens. As we keep continuing forward, we eventually reach what we call our first half equivalence point. So we can point that out here. And this will be at a specific pH. It will be at a pH of 2.2, which matches up to the first pKa for phosphoric acid. So the pKa of this acidic part of the phosphoric acid is going to be 2.2. One thing we should know is that when the pKa, or when the pH is greater than the pKa, we deprotonate something. And that should make sense according to our henderson hasselbach equation that we've shown right here. This is definitely one of the equations that you need to have memorized for the MCAT. And we can see that if the pH is greater than the pKa, if we solve this equation, it will show us that the deprotonated form has to be a greater concentration than the protonated form, and vice versa. So if our pH is less than the pKa, then our protonated form will dominate in solution. Okay. So below this half equivalence point, we have our phosphoric acid. Above our half equivalence point here, we have predominantly monosodium phosphate. And then when we add one full equivalent often one molarity of sodium hydroxide, right around this pH of five, we see our equivalence point, where almost everything is going to be monosodium phosphate here. Okay, so if we wanna write this out, we're gonna have 50-50 between phosphoric acid and monosodium phosphate here, whereas at this first equivalence point, we're going to have pretty much all monosodium phosphate and pretty much no phosphoric acid. However, this is a polyprotic acid, therefore we have two more hydrogens that we can take care of. Next one, we're going to see an equivalence point at 7.2. And these pKa's are worth knowing just because phosphoric acid is so common and so commonly seen on the MCAT. As we continue moving forward, we'll get to our next equivalence point when we've added two full equivalents of sodium hydroxide, completely getting rid of all of our second hydrogen to create disodium phosphate. So right here at our half equivalence point, this is going to be 50-50 between monosodium phosphate and disodium phosphate. Right here in this part of the graph, we get predominantly monosodium phosphate with a little disodium phosphate. 
and then in this part of the graph we get predominantly disodium phosphate and a little monosodium phosphate before we finally get to the equivalence point where we nearly have 100% disodium phosphate. And then finally we'll get to our last kind of half equivalence point, which is going to be at around 12.4. Okay. So we very rarely see phosphoric acid completely deprotonated like this just because it would take a very high pH to get it fully deprotonated, but it's worth knowing that at above 12.4, we're gonna get predominantly this trisodium phosphate, but at this level right here, we're getting predominantly disodium phosphate and just a little bit of trisodium phosphate. All right, so right here, we're gonna get 50-50 at this equivalence point between disodium and trisodium phosphate. So that's a titration curve of phosphoric acid. And this is best understood in the context of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. You'll see these often on practice problems, but without the conceptual understanding of the titration curve, it can be a little difficult to conceptualize this. So what I would recommend you do is draw this out yourself and then take a look at each section of this graph and then draw out the corresponding species that's predominant at each part of these curves that I'm showing. So if we want to match these up, we'll see predominantly phosphoric acid here, predominantly monosodium <clears throat> phosphate here, still predominantly monosodium phosphate, but with a little disodium phosphate there, disodium phosphate here, still disodium phosphate and then finally, predominantly trisodium phosphate here. That's it for today's MedCat video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.